Okay, look now at the starting lineups. The Marietta College Pioneers will be the home team today. That was not uh, due to a flip of the coin, I might say, because I think if it was, we'd probably be the visitors again. But because Glassboro State was a home team yesterday, the Marietta College Pioneers are the home team today. There you see the umpire sporting days game behind home plate. And uh, just in front of them, the, the crews uh, getting the field ready for this final ball game. Let's take a look first at the starting lineup and the batting rotation for uh, the Glassboro State Profs. They come out of New Jersey with a record of 28 and 11 now. They're from a school with an enrollment of about 6,800. And today they'll start Dino Hall in left field. He'll be the leadoff hitter. He's hitting currently at 317. Don DeJoseph will be at second base, batting the number two spot. DeJoseph, a 313 hitter. Frank Albano will be at shortstop. Albano will hit third. He is currently hitting at 384. Chip Peel will be the DH, and he'll bat in the number four spot. Peel, a 375 hitter. Brendan Rosenberg will be in center field. Rosenberg, a 379 hitter, will bat fifth. Tim Peterson will be in right field and bat in the number six spot. Peterson hitting currently at 284. Bobby Holden will be the catcher for Glassboro State. He's the 267 hitter. He'll bat in the number seven position. And Tom Peterson will be at first base, a 210 hitter. Uh, he'll bat in the number eight spot. Ralph Wendell will catch for Glassboro State and bat ninth. He is currently hitting at 333. And on the hill for Glassboro will be Bob Pfeffer. Pfeffer 9 and 2 on the season. 1 and 0 in the World Series. He has a 2.51 ERA. By the way, we'll be back after the Marietta lineup to talk about the two pitchers in today's ball game and make some comparisons on their previous efforts. But right now, we'll pause for these messages and be back with the Marietta starting lineup right after those. Home plate. God, it's had a real good World Series. You can just barely see him. With the umpire there, number 31. That is Scott Hollinger. And on the hill, well, you saw plenty of him, 12 innings worth. And that is the Pioneers' ace, Pete Kelly. Kelly on the season with a record of 7 0. And he's got a 2 3 8 ERA. Now take a look at Kelly on his final warm up tosses. And uh, as he completes those, let's look ahead to the Glassboro top half of the first inning. Glassboro. They're nicknamed the Profs. They are the NCAA South Regional Champion. They're out of the state of New Jersey. They come into today's ball game with a record of 28 and 11. Their school enrollment size uh, about four times that, the size of Marietta, 6,800. The head coach is Mike Briglia, and uh, they got a whale of a ball club. And coming into the screen right now is number 19. That is Dino Hall. Hall, the left fielder. Coming into World Series play, hitting at 317. Paul yesterday against the Pioneers was one for four. He had two RBIs and he scored once for the Glassboro State Props. Well, this is what we've waited for for the last, uh, oh, I don't know, better part of three months, and here we go. This is for the World Series championship. Pete Kelly on the hill for Marietta, and he'll go to work to Dino Hall. First pitch by the Pioneer right-hander is popped in the infield. Jimmy Burton about three steps deep on the outfield grass. One hands it, there's one away. One pitch, one out for the Crofts of Glassboro State. That'll bring up Don DeJoseph. On the hill for the Glassboro State Profs, you find Bobby Pfeffer. He was the winner in the initial game of uh, this tournament. He went nine innings in the ball game, gave up uh, three runs and 11 hits, walked nobody, and struck out four. One of those runs was earned, and on the season he has an ERA of 2.51. As the ball goes around the prof infield, half the thousand figure again. Swing and a miss by Knockreiner, strikes two. One ball, two strikes to knock. Have a little trouble with the PA system, huh? A little buzzing. Way up high, 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. You can hear some gals behind us from the Glassboro State, New Jersey area. Rooting Pfeffer on. He's got in trouble with that baseball, and the umpires don't want to give him anything new. Now he's got one. Well, I'm going to trade that one in now. This ought to be a dandy pitch. Cap two balls and two strikes. Knock Reiner. Looking to get things started for the Pioneers here in the bottom of the second. These teams combined for 21 runs yesterday. 
There's a ball hit very, very hard, but it's going to go foul. But the left fielder is over, has time, and makes the catch about four steps into foul territory. So Dino Hall runs down a high flying foul territory off the bat of knock runner. Kelly works, breaking pitch at Knockreiner, going to get by him, it'll go into left field. They're going to not send the runner, no. Yeah, they are going to send him. Tracy picked the ball up, then it came out of his glove. And heads up base running by Rosenberg, saw the flaw in the outfield and came home, standing. Base hit, error, left field. Well, the base hit would have filled the bases, but then when Tracy right. let the ball flop out of his glove, we had a run score, and Rosenberg ties it at 1-1. Still runners at first and second. One away, and the hitter will be Tom Peterson. There's another ball hit at the shortstop. That one will get through into center field. Tracy has it. He's going to come home with it. There's the throw, they got him, no, in. Nice throw that time by Tracy. And the runner slid under the tag and two runs are home and the last four shots have just been that, shots into the outfield. You see both Hollinger and Vasquez waiting on deck and finding the Pioneers behind by one. Really the aces of both staffs going here today, but with little rest. There's a pitch in the dirt all the way back to the screen. Count goes even now, one ball, one strike. getting a baseball to the pitcher. Yeah, really what the hold up is. Now we're ready. <laughs> nice crowd here at Pioneer Park is you'll probably top the thousand figure again. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss by Knockreiner strikes two. One ball two strikes to knock. Have a little trouble with the PA system, huh? A little buzzing. Way up high, 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. You can hear some gals behind us from the last borough state, New Jersey area. Rooting Pfeffer on. He's got in trouble with that baseball, and the umpires don't want to give him anything new. Now he's got one. Well, I'm going to trade that one in now. This ought to be a dandy pitch. Count two balls and two strikes. Knock Reiner looking to get things started for the Pioneers here in the bottom of the second. These teams combined for 21 runs yesterday. There's a the ball hit very, very hard, but it's going to go foul. But the left fielder is over, has time, and makes the catch about four steps into foul territory. So Dino Hall runs down a high flying foul territory off the bat of Knockreiner. We have two down, and the hitter now will be Scott Hollinger. Right hand hitter possesses pretty good power. Hit 351 on the regular season for Marietta. First pitch is up high, ball one. Fastball by Pfeffer. And it's 1 0. You know, that sun dropped behind the cloud, and that's good news. There's the 1-0 pitch. There's a dandy pitch. Took a little off that fastball, and it counts even now at 1-1. One one. That'll bring up uh, Jimmy Burton. Burton was hit by the pitcher, Pfeffer, first time around. 
advanced all the way to third on an error by Pfeffer and scored on a sacrifice fly by Tracy. That's the only pioneer run. Number two checks down to Paul Page at third, now steps in. Runner on and nobody down. We're in the bottom half of the third and we trail 2-1. First pitch, the runner is going, and he is out. Gladstone is out trying to steal. The throw by Holden to DeJoseph covering, and uh, there goes the threat. It's 0-1. Right. Yeah, now Pepper steps off. He was going to go from the stretch, didn't realize there wasn't anybody on. There's a ball lifted into straightaway left field. Dino Hall is there. Waits and makes the catch, and there's two down. Was credited with a sacrifice and an RBI as Burton scored after the catch back in the first inning. Tracy tempted bunt. That ball was over his head. He made contact and found it into the screen. No balls and a strike to Tracy. Pfeffer <laughs> has got a couple of balls he prefers. And I think he won that last one back. Yeah, he'll work this one over behind the man. In the meantime, the count stands 0-1 on Tracy. We are in the bottom of the third inning, and I think Tracy is trying to antagonize the hitter or the umpire who refused to give him another ball. Here we come. Oh, one. Inside, a little bit low, a ball, and the count is even at one and one. Tracy, I don't believe, will be going. Possesses fair speed. There's the pitch, popped, it's gonna be playable. Down the third base line, the catcher Holden is after it, makes the catch in foul territory, and that'll be all for Marietta in their half of the third inning. No runs on, no hits, there was two walks. One of those erased by catcher Bobby Holden, one left, but now completed uh, three. And the score is Glassboro State two and Marietta one. pitch. There's a ball hit by the third baseman. That'll get into left field. One run will score and Vasquez delivers an RBI single and we've still got a pair on. Well the Pioneer is tied up on a single by Vasquez and we go to the top of the order and Abby Gladstone. Cava scoring and on the play, Knockrunner moves to second base. Gladstone steps in. He is grounded to the pitcher and walked. First pitch, ball one. Here that Abby was trying to lay it down. Next pitch, strike call. That ball right at the waist, outside corner, and we're even at one ball and one strike. Next pitch in a little bit tight and high to Gladstone, and it's two and one. We've got runners at first and second, two down. The tie run has played it here in the fourth inning, and it's two two. Next pitch lifted into shallow right field. Second baseman going back, and he Pulls it down over his shoulder. Not a very picturesque catch, but uh, needless to say, it does the job. That'll be all for the Pioneers in their half of the fourth inning. Pioneers score one run on three base hits. There were two left, and now we have completed four innings of play, and the score is all tied at 2-2. Two -two. Balls one strike to 
Ralph Wendell, the number nine hitter for Glassboro State. There's a ball lifted very high and deep. That'll be in the gap in left center field. Running it down is J.J. Tracy. Here comes the throw to Cava. Scoring all the way from first base is Tom Peterson with a go-ahead run. And Wendell delivers a 2-1 pitch in the gap 370 feet away from here in left center field. A stand-up double for Wendell and an RBI. Now batting the left fielder. Number 19. Well, Glassboro changes the tie status very quickly. And they go on top by a score of three to two. And we go to the top of the order in Dino Hall with nobody down. Count even now at 2-2. Two -two. Kelly struggling just a bit here in the fifth. Breaking pitch hit by Knockreiner into left field. That'll play another run. And Glassboro now goes on top by a score of four to two. That'll bring up Don DeJoseph. DeJoseph has grounded to second and popped to second. He's 0 for two. Got a runner at first base and nobody down here in the fifth inning. Kelly from the stretch. Throws to first and the runner is back. Hall has good speed and could be a threat to go. Pitch, strike call to DeJoseph. Lined up to hit from my left side now decides against it. Lob throw to first, runner back. Again, Dino back in time and Kelly trying to hold him close. You'll have to look at DeJoseph the first time for the right side now here in this inning. Which switch hitter changes positions in the middle of a at bat? Next pitch a ball and it counts even at 1 1. 1 1 pitch low, ball two. Billy Mosca on deck for the Pioneers. Fouled back out of play, and account is even now at two balls and two strikes. Inselman has singled and then popped behind the plate, and the catcher, Bob Holden, yanked it in. One for two on the afternoon for Inselman. Something happened there. Well, Pfeffer will take a bit of time now. He likes to get those balls in the <coughs> rub down. Well, there you see the on-deck hitter, Billy Mosca, for the Pioneers. Mosca also won for two on the day. Now we're ready to go. Swing and a miss. Strike three to Greg Inselman, and that's all for the Pioneers in the fifth inning. Three up and three down. They get no runs on a hit. Double play. Pulled off by Glassboro State to erase the single. We have now played five complete. And Glassboro State leads Marietta by a score of four to two. No balls, one strike. The count on Moscow. Next pitch popped infield. Could it be playable? The catcher Holden is over. Makes the catch and Moscow becomes the first out of the sixth inning. Now that'll bring up Eddie Cava. Number 10. Ed Cava has singled and scored and grounded to second. He's one for two on the day. Pitch up just a little bit high, ball one. Come on, Bob, let's go, Bob. Come on, Bob. Come on, 
Pro pitch. That's a dandy. Strike called. The count is even at one and one. Popper. Infield shortstop. Albano calls for it. Makes the catch and there's two down. A couple of easy poppers in close for Marietta in the six so far. And that'll bring up Chuck Knockrenner. Knock has line to the left and then was safe on a fielder's choice in the second. Advanced to second, but then was left stranded. Pioneers work with two away here in the sixth inning and they trail by two, four to two. Breezing right along. First pitch to knock a little bit high and outside. Ball one. Ball out to knock runner. Hollinger's the on deck hitter, but we've got two down here in this inning. Ball lifted straight away right field. There'll be no problem for Tim Peterson, and the Pioneers are out in order in the sixth. One, two, three, and we have completed six. After six innings, it's Glassboro State four and Marietta two. We'll be back in one minute. We go to the bottom half of the seventh. There you see the phase one production banner in the background. And the Pioneers would like to get some started. We got the people on their feet here at Pioneer Park. Clouds also start to move in. Scott Hollinger, Carl Vasquez, and Abby Gladstone. That's eight, nine, and number one. Pfeffer works to Hollinger. First pitch is a strike call. Looked like Scott was taken all the way. He has walked and flied very deep to uh, center field, about 400 feet away. Swing and a miss on one down, down and away. Count now, no balls and two strikes. Check swing, curve ball well outside. The count is one and two. Strike three called on Hollinger. That is the second strikeout recorded by Pfeffer in this one, and there's one away for the Pioneers. Vasquez is now on his first with one away, and the hitter will be Abby Gladstone. Gladstone has dribbled one back to the pitcher, walked and fly to right. He is 0 for 2 officially. Pfeffer delivers inside and low. Ball one to Gladstone. Mike Wrigley, the coach, came out of the dugout and asked the umpire what it was, and he found out it was a ball. Next pitch, strike called at the knees, and it's one and one. That ball was in the same place, so he's even now on that one. One one, the count on the hitter, Gladstone. One one pitch. Strike two call. Gladstone had a notion, and that ball was right across the heart of the plate. So it's one and two to Abby. A one two pitch. Outside, ball two. Count is even at 2 2 to Gladstone. Jimmy Burton is on deck for Marietta. Pioneers now starting to run out of time. We're in the bottom of the seventh, and they trail 4 to 2. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Strike three called. No doubt about it, that ball was right there. Gladstone didn't get the bat off his shoulder, and he looked at three pretty good ones. Outside, and that looked awfully, awfully good. Holden thought he had strike three, and so did Bob Pepper, and so did I. That one looked like it was down the pike. The count now, a ball and two strikes. Next pitch is hit solidly, but right at the second sacker. Did Joseph has it? Throws the first, and there's one away. 
So Monday records the first out of the ninth for the Pioneers, and that'll bring up Abby Gladstone. Abby Gladstone. Gladstone is 0 for 3, is also walked. It's under that one. Two-o pitch inside and low ball three, and the count now is three and oh. Gladstone out ahead of Pepper. Three and oh. Well, Pepper likes to have the ball he likes, and he want to look over the whole bunch of them, and he picks out the right one. Now we're ready to go. We'll stay for the presentation so long as we can here. First and second place trophies will be given out by Denny Pope of the NCAA following this ball game. 3-0 pitch. Oh, way up high. Ball four. Well, we've got a base runner. Gladstone is on, and that brings the tie run to the plate, and Jimmy Burton will be the hitter. He was hit by the pitcher. And he is fly to left field and then singled twice successively. And he is now two for three at the plate. And now as in, we're ready to go. On deck, J.J. Tracy and Greg Inselman. First pitch to Burton, strike called, fastball right down the pipe. Like Burton was just going to feel him out on that first one. He delivered four in a row, bad to Gladstone. Abby with good wheels at first, but he'll not be going. We need a couple to tie here in the ninth. Next pitch is lifted into left field. The left fielder is over, makes the catch, and there's two away. So Burton hits the ball into left field. Dino Hall handles it, and it brings up J.J. Tracy. Now batting the left fielder, number 12, Tracy was credited, credited with a sacrifice in RBI in the first inning, then walked it into a double play and popped the third. Tracy has good power and could take it out of here. So Bob Pfeffer one out away from taking the world title back to Glassboro State, New Jersey. Here's a pitch. There's a ball hit uh, into left center field. Left fielder is over. Dino Hall makes the catch on the run, and this ball game is over. The final score is Glassboro 5, Marietta 3. And Glassboro State, now the world champions, the pioneers for the second time in recent history, the runner up in World Series play. They were also runner up about four years ago in the Division II World Series. So, unofficially, we have Marietta with three runs, seven hits, and four errors. On the other side of the ledger, Glassboro, five runs, ten hits, and one error. We'll be back to tell you all about it and to pick up the giving of trophies and some other post-game ceremonies right after this. We'll hold on for just a minute here. There may be an announcement of the all World Series team. And uh, if not, we'll probably wrap things up. We'll take this opportunity to say uh, that uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Page Kitchens down in Vienna, West Virginia, the Berry Haas Insurance Agency of Marietta, Marietta Savings and Loan, the Stroh's Brewing Company, and of course that fire brewed Stroh's Beer, Potmeyer Dodge Toyota at the corner of 3rd and Green Streets, and Walter J. McCarthy, Realtor and Associates. On the screen, you see Glassboro State with the championship trophy. All trophies, by the way, were the same with the exception of the championship trophy. The trim on that gold, the second, third, and fourth place uh, trophies exactly alike, only they were in silver. And of course, the inscription is different reading championship runner up third and fourth. So there you see the profs of Glassboro State, the 1978. Uh, national champions. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the all tournament. Here's team. what we've been listening for, and let's pick up the PA system as they announce the all tournament team. Vote, Greg Inselman, Marietta. <laughs> Catcher, Bob Holden, Glasgow State.
First baseman, Tom Peterson, Glassboro State. Second baseman, by unanimous vote, Jim Burton, Marietta. Third baseman, Kirk Mahaney, Cal State Stanislaus. Shortstop, John Niccolo, Ithaca. Left fielder, Dino Hall, Glassboro State. Center fielder, by unanimous vote, Abby Gladstone, Marietta. Right fielder, Tim Peterson, Glassboro State. And pitchers, Pete Kelly, Marietta. And Bob Pepper, Glassboro State. Ladies and gentlemen, the most valuable player of the 1978 tournament, Bob Pepper, Glasgow State. <laughs>